everybody, this is Jacob with NextGen. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about subnetting. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to subnet pretty easily on a Class C. Now first off I'll go ahead and just give a very brief explanation of the different classes and how you can find those ranges. Um, basically it's set up as a Class A, B, or C. I'm not going to get into Class D and E because for this particular use they don't really apply, but class D is for multicasting and class E is for research. Now, we're not going to talk about that. However, class A um, is going to be signified by a number between 0 and 126, and what this is referencing is the first octet of the IP address or network. In this case, we see that this number is 192. So basically, we just look into our range and we find that 192 falls into this range here and that makes it a class C network. What does that mean? Well, that means its default subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0 which is what I have listed here. So, what does that mean for subnet? Well, anything that's 255 in the subnet mask, you're not going to be able to subnet that. So, in this case, that means that we cannot subnet the first, second, or third octets. We only have the last octet to play with. And these are basics of subnetting, basics of, basics of networking, and these are things that you should learn to know. Um, the whole point of this video really is just to show you a simple, easy way to do subnetting without any of the big charts or 2 to the b minus 2 or any of that other stuff. This is looking at the binary the value of each binary digit and basically just using that to find all the information we need. So how it ends up turning out is all we need to know is the value of each bit in an 8-bit octet. And it always goes from right to left and I have them written down here. That's all you really need in order to do subnetting this way. It's very very easy once you learn it. Um, so as you see we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Hey, do you have to remember that? No. All you got to remember is it's 8 bits, and it starts with 1 and doubles each time. 1 doubled is 2, 2 doubled is 4, 4 doubled is 8, so on and so on. So, that's where we start with this whole thing. Alright. So we have a given network ID. This given network ID is 192.168.1.0. The subnet mask, by default, since it's a class C, is 255, 255, 2550, and again that means we can only play with this last octet whenever we're subnetting. Whenever we need to break that down into smaller portions, we can only use this last octet to do that. So, let's go ahead and start out with some requirements. Our requirements are create one subnet that contains at least 50 usable IP addresses, create two subnets that contain 14 usable IP addresses each and also do not waste any address space whenever you're creating these subnets and that's an important thing you don't want to waste any address space what do I mean well if you do it wrong you can end up with holes in between your different subnets and that's basically wasting space can those holes be used yes but they're restricted they're going to be restricted to be as small as they already are um, that's basically it how do I go about not wasting any address space? Well, you want to first create a subnet that is the largest that you want. In this case, we have 50 usable IP addresses compared to 14 usable IP addresses. So, if we want to not waste any address space, we're going to start out by creating the largest one. In this case, that's going to be the one that contains 50, at least 50, usable IP addresses. Then we'll move on and create the other two subnets that only contain 14 usable IP addresses each, because those are small. If you always follow this rule, you'll never waste any address space. It's pretty simple. And so, since that's all we're going to focus on first, is using or creating the largest subnet, I went ahead and removed the other requirements there, so we'll just focus on what we have here. Create one subnet that contains at least 50 usable IP addresses. So where do we begin? Well, we have our given network ID of 192.168.1.0.
what that tells me is no matter what, that's going to be the ID of the very first subnet. So I'll go ahead and throw that up there. The very first subnet is going to be 192.168.1.0. We haven't determined the mask yet or anything, but we know that that is going to be the first subnet ID. The next thing that we need to figure out is how many bits are going to be in the host field to create a subnet that supports 50 usable IP addresses. Well, how we figure this out is by simply adding the numbers or the values of each bit. Again, there's 8 bits in each octet. That's what each one of these numbers represents. 128 is 1 bit value, 64 is 1 bit value, so on and so on. If you add all, all these up together, what does that give you? It gives you 255. And that's what we have to work with. So, adding these numbers from right to left, what gets us to 50 first? Well, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16. Hmm, what does that equal? An easy way to figure this out is it's going to be one less than the number to the left of it. So, 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is going to equal 31, which is one less than 32. Hey, does that give us 50 usable IP addresses? 31? No, that's too small. So, what we need to do is go on to the next one. What is the value of 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1? It's going to be one less than 64. That gives us 63. 63 IP addresses in the host field. Well, we also have to take into consideration the broadcast, so we have to subtract one from that. That gives us exactly 62 usable IP addresses there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and draw a line. This line represents the division between the subnet ID, which is to the left, and the host field, which is to the right. These numbers can be manipulated for the host field, and the numbers over to the left can be manipulated for the subnet ID. In this case, we already know our subnet ID is going to be dot zero, so there will be nothing in these two. These two bits will not be used. They will not be turned on in this particular subnet. So as a quick recap on what we just did, we just figured out how many bits we're going to need in our host field to support at least 50 usable IP addresses. In this case, we added from right to left, or from left to right, however you want to do it, but probably want to go from right to left. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32, and again, that gave us 62, which can, where, which does contain 50 addresses. And all the importance just comes down to this line that we drew here, separating these two. Why is that so important? Well, because the next step to make this whole process so easy is going to be looking at the value of the bit directly to the left of that line. In this case, it's 64. So we take the value of this bit, and we're going to add it to the value of what we already have in our first created subnet, and that's going to give us the next usable subnet. What does that mean? That means the next usable subnet is going to be, in the last octet, 64 plus 0. Okay. So here we have already figured out what our next subnet ID is going to be. Now we haven't created a mask for that, and I haven't even told you what the mask is, or we haven't looked to find out exactly what the mask is for the first one, although we drew our line, so we will know. But what we've done is already determined what the next usable subnet is going to be, no matter what. You may now say, hey, what is the mask for subnet number one? Well, it's going to be the value of these two bits tagged to the end of this mask here, the original, 255, 255, 255. So, you add 128 plus 64, and that gives you 192. 128 plus 64 equals 192. So here I've written the mask out, and it's 255, 255, 255, 192. And this can also be represented by using a slash and 26 after the network ID or subnet ID.